Hey guys, welcome back to the Outlook Industries podcast. We are here today with Sam as my co-host. Welcome, Sam, to hello uh, everyone hosting hosting the Outlook Industries podcast. Yeah, yeah, this is very very exciting for me to uh, team up with Trevor for this one. Yeah, but, we had to get I had to get Sam in here because he had a connection to our guest today, and uh, he's from all the way over in New Zealand. None other than Uber Scab himself. Bruder Sprad. Bradley Gowdy. <laughs> yes. We had a great time with Brad. We just got done with the conversation, actually, and I think you guys will really enjoy it. He has crazy things to say about the industry, and he has all the insights. Some inside scoop stories that you do not want to miss in this one, um, and this is one of the longer episodes uh, that we've done so far. It's yeah, about run runs about an hour and a half, and I think you're going to want to listen in for the entire duration of the podcast. Yeah. Listen to what Sam says. Yeah, he, he says it best right there. Don't miss out. There's going to be some great segments in here, a great conversation. You know what's up. We're always doing this, but let's stop rambling and get right into the podcast. Enjoy. It's the Outlook Podcast. We're here with the Outlook Podcast. Just we're here. We're talking to cool people. Hey guys, welcome back to the Outlook Industries podcast. Today we have Bradley Gowdy on here. How you doing, Brad? Hey man, I'm appreciating the proper pronunciation of the surname. I had to make Sam sure I got it that. right. All right, I couldn't. I, I couldn't not. Yeah. <laughs> no, thanks. Uh, welcome, welcome everyone. Uh, yeah, welcome, Sam. Were you gonna? I, I were you here, gonna kick I this here off as well? Um, yeah, yeah. So. Um, just to, to provide some context for the viewers, um, Brad and I actually know each other. I took a gap year uh, after finishing high school and went down to Australia and New Zealand um, in 2018, 2019. And Brad was nice enough to let me stay at his pad for about two weeks, which was really great. Um, some fond memories spent there. Um, so I'm, I'm such really a great host. Get this kicked off. It's going to be great. Um, and I think, yeah, I mean, might as well just uh, start, start the conversation off with some... Uh, SMX related topics. So oh. as an SMX writer <laughs> yourself, Brad. Uh, <laughs> Christ. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, like, what, 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 like the, let, let's just maybe approach this from a broad spectrum. Like, what, what's how, how do you feel about the state of scootering at the moment? Like, in terms Man. of man. Well, it's a good opening question. I, yeah. I guess there's there's plenty of thought to be shared here. Mm-hmm. The I mean, so, the current climate, you know. I, you guys are probably aware. I mean, there is, there's always concern in the climate. Do you know what I mean? Uh, as a niche sport, we always have a fair amount of concern on the plate as to, you know, what's going to happen in the future, what's happening next year, what's happening next season, who are the riders right now, who are the influencers right now. There's all these things that have consequences, uh, you know, being misused and being a yes, niche sir. sport. It's pretty, it's pretty easy to misuse those powers. Do you know what I mean? when you have such a diverse uh, fan base, a big following and so on and so forth. And then you pair that with the monetary incentive of, you know, profiting from such a small niche, which has no, no regulation, no standardization, no, in, you know, all seeing governing body yet, you know, we kind of have one. We'll probably get into that a little bit more later Mm -hmm. specifically, but my point is that there's there's always concern to be concerned about. There's always things that that need to be worried about, and and I guess I'm the guy that's you know pretty much dedicated to worrying about those things at all times. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you know, other than that though, other than that, I would say in terms of culturally speaking, like the culture side of scootering is actually in a really good place right now. I think that culturally speaking, we've got past the whole super core versus Instagram clout kind of argument. And there are an actual abundance of video parts going out. I've noticed lately, you know, you've got Cinderblock, uh, Trial and Error just came out the other day. There's all these singularly, singularity, I don't know. There's all these <laughs> individually named projects, you know, from these writers coming out, which is way more interesting than all these Insta parts. And considering the fact that Insta is a little meh right now, yeah, it's, it's kind of a good thing. You guys been seeing like a lot of these videos come out as well? Oh yeah, yeah. Dude. it's been awesome. And I think that Matt McKean has been doing like such a great job with Trendkill. I think that's who runs Trendkill. So like that whole platform has really helped with getting video parts out, 
as kind of the mm. scootering thrasher, which I think is awesome. You've now got Olay brand as well, which is kind of doing right. some of that too, aren't they? They're yeah, just like they're uploading they're people's parts, which job. is nice. Undialed does that a bit as well too. Yeah. 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 It's actually an interesting um, sort of platform that they're that they're trying to create. I'm wondering like, you know, and, and we've talked about the monetization value of the niche industry before, yeah. you know, obviously, you know, we'd want someone like Trendkill to profit from what they're doing. Do you know what I mean? Yes. But there's yeah. this so there's sort of like a misconception on the terms of if you monetize, then you're no better than the corporates or whatever. But that's a huge misconception. You know, everyone has a right to monetize from, you know, whatever they like. It's how they go about it, you know, the actions they take, the quality of product that they release, the quality of content that they release, all these factors, you know, there's all those things that sort of play into that equation. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, of course. Um, I before we get into more of more of this, I kind of want to hear what your backstory is. Where yeah. did you grow up? When did you kind of get into scootering? Kind of like your introduction. Okay. So I'm Brad, Scooter Brad. Uh, you guys will know me as Finance B, Six Bones, etc. Uh, yeah, Buddhist <laughs> Brad, obviously. You know, I need It's actually Will Cashin who's supposedly Buddhist Brad. I don't know if you guys know this, oh, but yeah, really, right? From yeah. So when ago. Will really? Will yeah. did, and and this is a funny story, oh, man. I'll, I'll finish. I'll do my intro <laughs> afterwards, but I, I need it. I need to tell this story. When Will coincidentally made Scoot Review Six Nine on the day that episode was supposed to go out, he had no idea. He literally had no idea that episode sixty nine was the next one to be released, and it was supposed to be released that day. He makes this video posts it and i have no idea i'm just totally clueless i don't even think i'd spoken to the guy like directly before then and i see <laughs> i see this video and i'm just cracking up like scoot yeah. review 69 and he's doing the whole the whole bit like you know just making up these funny stories that weren't even real at all so it was like, yeah. like the fake news thing and all that kind of jazz but man was that oh god he's so funny eh? but he is the one who supposedly goes by the name Buddha spread because it was a parody of my show right that's what, that's but just i think yeah, everyone's now you... heard the words and they're like Buddha spread Buddha yeah. spread yeah. yeah i think the vault probably had a big a big part in that as well sean would just call me that every opportunity he could <laughs> oh yeah oh, I love yeah that. but anyway, going back to my um going back to my origins um i started scootering when i was i think 10 you know i i, I had a scooter probably before then but didn't, you know, didn't try and hop up curbs or grind fucking tree trunks and such things. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was I was never allowed to go to a skate park uh, until I was maybe, I think I was 13 the first time I went to a skate park. Uh, I go to the nice. skate park and I was actually on a board at the time. And yeah, like I was skating then. Yeah. So I go to the yeah. skate park on my skateboard. I see dudes on their scooters. I'm like, oh, yo, like. I got, I got my scooter at home, like, and they're doing like stuff like on their scooters. Like I've never seen that, you know, it's just a typical reaction that yeah. everyone's got in their OG story, but just seen it. And I was like, man, that's so sweet. Went and got my whip, came straight back and just never put it down since. What was your um, first whip? First whip. Ah, uh, it was called a zoom. It was like a zoom. It was basically the razor fold up. But oh not, okay not yeah, the yeah. a1 fold up it was like the nice fold up it had like the lever system and you could fold so you could yeah. actually have the whole bolt thing it was like the razor pro not ultra pro but yeah gotcha around about that level yeah so from there you know we went to the the mad gear with three piece bars and lived the cody oh, don yeah. years and you know did was went through all of that stuff you know when when mad gear was was the it team and yeah. ryan williams was you know I think he's the same age as me pretty much, but, yeah. you know, I kind of grew up alongside all that stuff. So all the stuff that, you know, you'd be aware of in the scootering industry, you know, that's, that's where my knowledge comes from. And, and, and when, uh, when it developed into this whole scooter Brad, you know, facade almost, you know, yeah. it's, it's, it's been one of my many names, one of my many aliases. I've been uh, BG media. I did Brad is legit. I did, uh, scooter brad i've done six bones now and there's there's all these just it's it's like you know stems of business you could say 
people yeah. see it as a as an actual human being you know scooter brad the human it, you know that the scooter brad it, it doesn't exist it is a fabricated thing to yeah. to an extent um so like yeah like you name. know <laughs> yeah when, when when we went into the business aspect i guess that's when you could say people started becoming aware of you know who i was and and the content that I sort of made. So that knowledge of, you know, knowing all those things and being obsessed with basically everything scooter related just coincided with, oh, I need to make a, a living from what I do and I'd love to make it from scootering. So how do I do that? Yeah. Uh, his X, Y, Z holes in the industry. I think I could fill this one. And then I went, you know, that, that was that. Yeah. Mm. So like, when did that kind of start for you? Like, when did your first scooter related media something or another and what's mm -hmm. kind of the timeline behind those i think the first time i posted would have been 2009 like the creation of youtube you know we all made youtube channels as our yeah in our little group and i think i would have been about 13 at that time so it was you know the same year i picked up scootering it was almost like a right place right time sort of thing yeah. you know i pick it up I start posting these, you know, the mini vids and montages, the Bradley G Christmas vid one, yeah. and two, the following year, you know, I did all that video part stuff way back then. Yes. And, yeah. and so, it, you know, it, it, it gradually progressed through the stages, you know, from the handy cam to the HD handheld to the full on DSLR. And we finally had like proper cameras to make these videos with. And yeah, and about this time would have been, you know, at when I was finishing sort of school, you know, kind of leaving school and figuring out what I was going to do next. And yeah, I mean, it all just, it all just snowball affected basically, you know, this media sort of thing. <laughs> yeah. So did you ever think about if you were going to do like video part stuff and when did the scooter brad like scoot review thing start so my media progress from start to finish was it was kind of like 2009 youtube became established we would make like mini videos and and as the time progressed you know on the platform when the platform went from being absolutely nothing to anyone being able to make money from whatever they uploaded to it it was sort of like an end goal once that became available it was like how do we actually turn this into something that is making money yeah. So we come up with this idea, Scoot Review. Sorry, I'd come up with this idea, Scoot Review. Yeah. And I literally, I edited the introduction. You, you, you'll all be familiar with it, the two planets yeah. and everything bobs around with the music. Yeah. I made that to get into a university sort of course, uh, like at a design school. It's called UB Design. Yeah. I did digital video animation and to get in, like I said, I made this intro, put it on my portfolio, sent it to them. And they were like, yep, you can get in. Cause I didn't have the uh, specific credits from yeah, school and whatnot. Right. So I just basically beat myself in with the, with the content. And that's the way to do it. <laughs> so, yeah. And like, so scarce and, you know, Keemstar, they were both very popular on YouTube. I think at the time, sort of 2015, 2016. And yeah, it was like, you also had inside scooters and scootering, but they were just a text-based web blog. Do you know what I mean? There was no yeah. face on that. There was no entertainment value behind that. And it wasn't on YouTube. So there needed to be something on YouTube for it. And then there it was, you know, the first idea, the first video I made, it was, you know, in my shitty old apartment bedroom, I was sharing a house with six people. I just Jeez. filmed like, you know, at, yeah. I don't know, at, at an ungodly hour to make sure that no one else was making noise or like, no one could hear me or whatever. I, you know, yeah. I've never even done it before. I was super just scarce about it. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's it definitely, it took a long, long, long time to to turn it into something like that. And, and I don't think it would have taken off had I not have done anything prior to it. I couldn't have just jumped into this position and been like, all right, I'm going to start uploading scooter news videos. Like, yeah. You know, there's a there's a major major backlog of information and experience and dedication to the sport for me to have actually become this entity. Yeah. And what I think that's a big misconception. Like a what did you have for a following when you started Scoot Review? When I started, I had 13,000 subscribers, so I wasn't at zero. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. you know, I had fairly decent numbers. I think I had 4,000 on Insta. Uh 
and I don't think there were any other platforms at the time. It was just, yeah. you know, you had that and Snapchat basically, um, which I definitely used to promote my, my show. Yeah, you have to, you have to. Yeah, but it, no, it, I, you know, I wasn't at rock bottom and, and that yeah. goes to my point with, you know, I've worked for a very, very long time for free, you know, all those years beforehand to get to that point. Yes. Yeah. And when in your YouTube timeline were you able to like fully commit to it as your job pretty like honestly soon after i launched the show very very soon after i i think i uploaded for two months while i was studying uh and i I also worked a part-time job i worked at subway as well making i was literally a sandwich artist at subway to support my university expenses yeah pay my rent obviously because you know i moved out of home when i was barely 18 and i've been at a home ever since yeah my own way and all that stuff you know no free rides nice. around here <laughs> no, free no rides sorry. Here, <laughs> no um but yeah no it was it was very soon after i don't maybe you remember i went on tour to australia with a company called analog do you just remember them Analog's yeah 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 adrian yeah uh, yeah um, <laughs> <laughs> so like we um yeah we go on tour to australia and they my sandwich artistry job sandwich artistry they (laughs) wouldn't let me go they wouldn't let me book the time off and stuff because you know i I was pretty new and you know i barely even started making these sandwiches right here yeah and i was just like you know what like i'm just gonna cut it like i quit like quit right there and then on the spot didn't take my week's payout or anything just said fuck you i'm i'm going (laughs) so i left there you go and then left yeah went on this trip and haven't looked back since man wow that's awesome that's yeah. so crazy because i you never really know where the number is or what the number is for like having youtube as your job mm. i was okay so number wise specifically i was at twenty thousand. Twenty thousand subscribers okay is where i is where i quit my job yeah um nice. but like you know i could see i could see that the rate of increase was you know it was going to blow that out of the water so i knew that in in six months time if i kept doing what i was doing I would forecast earnings of, you know, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 on, you know, these months prior, uh, uh, yeah. later on. So, yeah. How do you feel about, it. how do you feel about Keemstar speaking since you're like kind of the scooter version of drama yeah. alert? Did you take a lot of inspiration same, from him? I, I drew inspiration from Keemstar in the sense of his show was a dramatized, you know, version of events. Right. Um, in saying that, Keemstar has obviously been outdone for lying a number of times. He's been calling people, you know, nonces and pedos and things like this. I yeah. <laughs> have very much stayed away from strong insinuations like that. And yeah. also, no one has ever made a response video to any of these things that I've made and busted me out for a lie. Why? Because... I literally just republish either Instagram comments, DMs, posts, yeah, and or whatever else you know everyone provides. So, yeah, it, it, I don't want people to compare me with Keemstar in the sense like we're the same kind of person. Definitely no, no, not, not, not at all. Definitely not. But in the sense of you know uh, bringing a dramatic energy to news yes absolutely you know that's what makes it sell and that's what everyone does they have to sensationalize sensationalize the news yeah what is like your like what was the biggest controversy that you covered in scoot review and like which kind of thing got like, that involved me or didn't involve me <laughs> that is up to you sir <laughs> um they were all great. Sam, yeah, Sam, have you got any suggestions? I'm sure you could uh, yeah, number a, a few. The SMX ordeal was pretty up there, I'd say. Yeah, and you know, that again, it plays into right place, right time. You know, right. as I'd done three episodes of the show yeah, before somebody tried to entirely change the like the name and financial the string pulling theory. basically of the entire industry you know like uh-huh. that happened immediately during the launch of the show so it was again you know right place right time gold mine, dude. Yeah. and yeah i mean that was huge that was probably why 
I think afterwards it became such a such a passion for me personally, you know, because I really enjoyed, you know, uh, doing my doing my bit, <laughs> doing my bit. A good there, a know? good little bit of drama never hurts. Yeah, having, <laughs> having a good bit of fun with it, you know. But it, but it also, you know, you got you can't take away from the seriousness of you know the actual subject matter. Yes, it is sensationalized and has all these memes and jokes and other stuff tossed in there, but like the the actual subject matter has always been a very key, a very big focus for me personally, you know? No, totally. Like, yeah, I think the the whole SMX ordeal, people, people almost like tried to over romanticize it, even though it was a really important thing. Cause some people actually wanted to legitimize that. Yeah. Know? Oh yeah. And, and you know, so the like people that, that didn't like, do the research people, on it were just crazy. Yeah. Like, it, people like you that were, 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 you know, so speaking on behalf of the people that didn't have a the research or or the wherewithal to like understand exactly what that would do to the industry mm. to have these two people try to re-identify scootering um and then like they had those scooter farm interviews where they would ask the pro riders that came on the mm. scooter farm interviews and none of them thought. supported it <laughs> and every single one of them yeah. including tanner was like Nah, it's yeah, scary nah. to me, dude. No, like, yeah, and seriously, like, what sort of, what sort of, what sort of message did that send? You know, it had had nobody done anything about that, had nobody asked any questions. Yeah, where would we be now? Who would who would be the top rich Donny right now in the scoot scene? You know, it'd it would be, be them two. Completely too. different. I can't yeah. imagine where we would be. You know, I, jeez, that would change everything. Yeah, <laughs> dude. I so, you know, so yeah. I mean, people people make a big claim about the whole, you know, oh, you, you know, you just start drama and you're bringing drama. It's like, well, no, sir. The 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 drama is there. You just haven't heard about it. You just don't know about yeah. it. You're not aware yeah. of it. And that's it's a very crucial thing to have to do yeah. is make people aware of of these things that are going on because it 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 jeopardizes the future. Yeah, or it can. Yeah. Oh, I'm sh- yeah. I didn't even think about that. I'm sure you got that a lot. Like you're the one instigating the drama. That's just you just yeah. point out. And, and people are so instant gratification based that they don't have the ability to see the ramifications of something like what SMX would do five, ten years from now. Mm. And that was already five years ago, wasn't it? 2017, 2016, around there. Yeah, that's insane. Yeah, 2016. I was still yeah. to do. Okay, you know what? I will. I will admit this. I was a. Pro- uh, I was an impressionable little 15 year old kid when that mm. came in mm. and you better believe my fucking um instagram bio <laughs> it was like and, smx at smx yep. yeah it's no a, and, and many, <laughs> many many kids will deny that but you know that people did that and like looking back yeah. i'm so glad that people like you spoke out and were like i mean sorry it's just it's scootering that's the authentic name for this yeah story. i mean yeah yeah i can't yeah it, looking back on it you know you, you you wonder even why they they tried to bother what the hell did it happen? yeah, what did it yeah for, for what reason you know yeah. and and that's but that's the thing we don't know it's we never we ne- and we don't know to this day we don't know why I, they I, never I, answered I, why well, okay, I, no I, I don't think we know why but we know the rationale that caperin himself arrived at because in your video you show like essential essentially his explanation for the smx things like yeah, we're we're not going to see scootering. Like it sounds terrible. We're not going to see yeah. that. Why? SMX Why does it like sound BMX terrible? It doesn't. Legitimate. Yeah. They think that they thought that SMX sounded more legitimate, even though we were like yeah. practically. And it doesn't at all. <laughs> no, no. We're sandbagging off of BMX. Yeah. They would have. There would have been riots in the fucking streets. Yeah. No. From, from no. The BMX. No one. And rightfully so. Square bracket. No one like this. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of speaking of SMX, but uh, what do you think in our current situation in scootering does the scooter industry need for the future? It needs a fucking body entity, that's for sure. So here, here's where we open up that can. Uh, <laughs> ISA thing, right? The ISA. Okay, no longer ISA, is it? Yeah. So okay. So we had <clears throat> we got a like a four part. It was supposed to be a one part video like a 20 minute, you know, classic. Uh, yeah. I could probably pull up just a couple of things for my keynotes. Cause I have a script of it. Um, 
but yeah, essentially we've got this video about ISA talking about their conversion to the Federation, right? The, I, right. Uh, the International Scootering Federation. So I reached out to Terry, you know, and I asked, so what, what is this? Why is this? And, you know, trying to get an understanding as to why they're doing what they're doing. Yeah. And they're saying, you know, oh, so most federations and such and such are registered in Sweden. And this is a step towards, you know, getting in the Olympic Games Ready, ready, rah, all this, all these great things, oh. right? So I put all that in the video. And then a few days later, I get a call from FRS, which is Freestyle Roll Sports New Zealand, who is branched off from ASA. So ASA no longer has jurisdiction over our com- over our competition. Thank oh, Jesus. That's, that's an entirely different story. Oh, that what? is a big win. That it's a big win really for us. When I was down there, that was like mm. like so no more wasted money from their from their um from yeah. their people. Yeah. Um so I get a call from FRS and they're telling me um you know we're linked with Urban World Series. So Urban World Series is Extreme Barcelona and they oh, okay. are not linked with ISF. So just understand that these two parties are now separate. ISA is in one lane and Urban Roller Sports is in this lane. Yeah. Urban Urban World Series, sorry, has a connection with World Skate. World Skate is the Olympic uh, committee that considers and f- you know fast forwards these sports to the big screen of the Olympics. Right. So I get this call and they're telling me, you know, we're linked with them. ISA is not in the picture. ISF hasn't been responding, hasn't been in touch, hasn't really done anything yet. They've been telling me in the other channels, oh, we're doing everything great. You know, we're, we're right on track. And here I am about to release this video, like can't do it, have to hold off. Um, but at this stage, it is to my understanding that if you're not at urban world series, you're not going to the Olympics. Like the Olympics oh. is tied with urban world series, not with ISA. The ISF has no, no chance, has no chance at connecting with world skate organization because they blew it. Supposedly. Yeah. Reportedly. Oh, okay. So I guess so, maybe then the, the um, world roller probably takes precedent and like has more credibility in terms of where riders want to go to compete. Especially if they're a contest rider that's like, oh, if scootering gets in the Olympics, this is where it's going to start. So I'm going to I'm gonna enter yeah. this competition rather than all the ISF potential competitions that come up mm. in the next few years. You know, the thing to understand about ISF is that to this point, you know, it, it still just looks like it's Terry and what's the other guy's name? Graham? I oh, can't even remember his name. Phil. Phil. Okay, it Phil? so it's just two people that run that? Yeah, it's it's Phil and Terry, and I mean they have other, you know, board members and such, but like they're the president, and vice president, so they're doing the bulk decision making. You know, they're making yeah. the big calls, they're making the big Zoom meetings with World Skate, Brady Ra, and you know there have been meetings, there have been meetings, and to my understanding, the communication just is not there. They don't want to give up the reins, quote unquote, from unnamed source. Yeah. <laughs> You know, it's, so it's, 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 it's sketchy. And that's one of my biggest concerns right now. You know, we're talking about concerns earlier that are on the plate. That is the biggest one. You know, we had action space last year trying to, you know, dip their toes in the bucket. Yeah. And yeah. even they, they're tied in with urban world series as well. They have like a, a mega ramp sponsorship event going on or something mm-hmm. in collaboration with urban world series. And, you know, that to me again is concerning because people still haven't even heard the story about action space. They haven't seen the, the letters that they sent out they yeah, haven't the money, seen has the money arrived yet did the yeah the, yeah that did the writers haven't not seen get compensated it, you have no know. idea don't i know. guess i guess your guess is as good as ours like there is yeah that's been my guess is as good as yours the rug at this point yeah wow. wait, wait, hush, wait hush. what so the action space competition they had this like big um, an announcement post of that at the very start, and they were offering like a forty thousand dollar prize purse, which is like every bit of yeah. earning. It was seventy. It was seventy grand. Seventy. Well, regardless, there has mm. been no payout. No payout of of any. Well, of uh, yeah. I, to my understanding, like they had, they had all these riders on payroll. So oh. Okay. The the contract that I was described, the contract that was described to me was basically like a $500 monthly sponsorship check, just like you'd receive from any, any counterpart that you're contracted with. 
um, you know, tax implications and stuff is all up to the individual person that's getting paid out because I'm yeah. guessing it's an international payment of sorts. So it's overseas sales. It gets zero rated for whoever sends it. And the person that receives it has to individually pay their tax on it, right? Yeah. Which means that the supplier of the money, aka action space, is not, you know, liable to pay any tax on any of this and they're actually able to write it off oh and we don't know we don't know who is writing it off and that was the big question the big question was where's the money coming from because the ties with the organizer pointed to only one thing and that was shell companies and all this other sketchy stuff sketchy stuff This has all been reported in like a Danish newspaper and stuff and no one cares. Nobody's bothered to see it. No one's looked it up. The first paragraph, you know, it's bodied Scooter Brad and the first paragraph is essentially about me. The next is behind a fucking paywall for some god ungodly reason. But so no one has seen this and people again have romanticized the idea that I am central to it and it's somehow fabricated from from this end which it's wow. absolutely not it is a real thing and is very concerning that you should be fucking looking into yeah wild that's bizarre wow so what kind of a little bit back but like what competition organization do you think is kind of like you should be looking at going forward like Urban what's world. important Urban World Series for sure. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, you know, and, and it's they've practically run the last three ISAs anyway. You know, yeah. they were all at Barcelona Extreme, one, two, three, all in a row. You know, yeah, line them up, knock them down. And now ISF is not involved this year, and that is a bad sign. If if anyone's wondering, you know, why is an ISA at Barcelona Extreme? Because they have lost control. They are no longer the it thing. One anymore, no. This year's World Finals isn't going to be called ISA 2021 Men's World Final. It's going to be U-Dub-S, Urban World Series. You know, that's going to be Oh, it. yeah. Interesting. So, you know, that's what I'm going to I'm gonna invest my platforming in, I guess you could say, you know. So I, I guess everyone else should probably just be doing the same. Yeah. Just try and promote the contest as much as you can. And, you know, it's it's imperative for us to actually make a comeback this year and actually like showcase that we're still around and kicking. Because if if yeah. people don't invest in this one and they realize like, oh shit, it's all just falling apart, bro, they're they're just gonna leave. You know, they'll start yeah. skating, they'll start biking or something because they're just they're fed up with this shit. Yeah. Totally. You know, Where is that to point. gonna take place? Is that still gonna be in Barcelona? Uh the Urban World Series, yes, is at Park Del Forum, Barcelona Extreme. Okay, sweet. Mm. 25th of september that's next saturday and you oh, can watch wow. that wow it's coming up oh that's right no I, hear, I i keep hearing that um people in like arizona and california are preparing to fly to, out mm. to fly out there yeah yeah and that's another thing you know people have to be vaccinated to go and there's a lot of anti-vaxxers in the community there's a lot of people who won't get vaccinated in time there's a lot of people who you know are in different circumstances all over the world yeah it actually begins <laughs> yeah, yeah there's a lot of that how was speaking of covid how has covid kind of affected you I well mean, we're currently we currently uh in level four lockdown like full lockdown at the moment which has been on for maybe the past month now we're supposed to be going down to level three next tuesday so seven days from now we're supposed to go down to level three which opens up a bit more freedom but like i only moved up to the north island you know uh in like february when i was down south bro no worries like there's no covid down there eh? they get no cases people don't give a shit if you're if you're at a skate park like no one calls the cops and stuff but up here it's a fully different story like you go anywhere bro people just knock on you man like immediately it's insane and are you, Brad, are you in like the, are, are you in the Auckland area now? Yeah. Yeah. Right. I live in Auckland, like right in the city. Oh, you're in the city. Oh, yeah. Dude, that's a big change of scenery for you. Holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Big you've adjustment. Been, you've been moving around a bit the last few years, to say the least. Um, yeah. I mean, far out, dude. The moving thing was, yeah, it was like a whole nother story. When I moved to, because Ham- I moved to Hamilton before I moved up here. Yeah. And, even between like between my last place in Christchurch where everyone would have seen me and this place where they're now seeing me, I lived in like three different houses, like for weeks. 
Yeah, I, I recall when I stayed with you, you had that pretty long running apartment right by the subway down the street. And yeah. Af- and, and like the day after I left was when you were trying to get your shit into the new place. Yeah. Didn't wasn't that kind of a short lived place? Uh, no, actually. The so after the apartment was that man? Did you leave like right around the shooting? Because yeah. the mosque, the mosque Dude, shooting I, in Christchurch was, was the, the one day like I moved. Right down the street. Yeah. And that, that yeah, was, that was crazy. Yeah, that was nine days before I no nine days after I left. Yeah, yeah. Shit, that's so buzzy. Yeah. yeah so we no when we moved into that place, I actually lived out there for quite a while. I lived out there for easily two years. I'd say probably like just on two years, and then I moved up here but like that was like a great a great place oh so it was just it was it was that then where you are now then yeah because that was fe- that was march and then you moved so you were there for probably what a year 10 11 months yeah yeah right on pretty much that's sick yeah cool. so when i moved up here i literally i moved up to hamilton which is like an hour south of auckland yeah and yeah. i moved there to basically how about my how about a family member and it didn't really go very well it turned out that it was kind of a financial incentive for them and not so much for me uh, so i find i up and left that pretty quickly uh, came up here which is where i was going to go like immediately anyway but i just did this you know little side thing for a few months out of the courtesy to my family right <laughs> regretted it <laughs> moved up here got an apartment with this guy jack and there must just be something about cunts called jack but fucking hell bro this guy <laughs> holy shit man he made my <laughs> life a living hell what, this guy really? what? yeah man this dude so he has like he has two cats right i've got my own cat he's got two cats and yeah. we're like yeah bro like it'll be fine like we can we can make it work and shit and like my cat is a good ass cat like she's disciplined she knows like like if you clap she stops clawing something you know like she's trained i train yeah. her well yeah. This guy's cats. Oh, fuck. Right. I have a $5,000 couch. It took literally a week and a half for one of his cats to piss like all over two of the oh, cushions. No. Right. Wow. I hit this guy. I'm like, bro, like you need to get a professional cleaner to come clean the couch. And I need you to keep this cat. Like it is this particular cat. Like there's one of the cats who just like she's fucking so anxiety driven and i'm like what did you do to this cat or why haven't you fucking helped this cat feel better or something i don't know (laughs) who who hurt this puss man (laughs) so yeah he he you know and he takes days to bother to fucking call a cleaner and shit makes it a whole thing and you know on top of that i've got the smaller bedroom uh, I don't have the parking spot in the garage. I've got the uncovered parking spot. I get I get the shit end basically just of the whole the whole everywhere. deal. Yeah, just every short straw. And I'm like, yeah. right, <laughs> there needs to be at least one thing that you'll like put in my favor. Otherwise, I'm gonna leave. Like I'm just gonna move again. And he was like, mm, you yeah, know, like this is pretty much the way it is, bro. And I'm like, what? Oh, fuck. What? Sake. No way. Let, let, me, oh, let me tell you, let me tell you a great story. Let me tell you a great story. Okay. So, and, <laughs> I just remember this is fucking awesome. So I'm wondering, like, I'm wondering to myself, why is this guy such a Muppet? How what what is he doing? Like, how is he so fucking Muppetized? Right. I go on his laptop. This dumbass's laptop, man, is the same password as the Wi-Fi password. This fucking <laughs> idiot. So I put the Wi-Fi password in his laptop, right? Yeah. And I was looking for what was I looking for? Oh, he texted me like saying, Oh, where's the agreement, bro? Because I was asking for my like cash deposit back. He's like, I don't know where the agreement is, bro. What agreement? Like being all sarcastic, like doing the thing, like where he as in he wouldn't give me my money back and i was like oh don't play fucking games with finley sir (laughs) you know he fucks off to i don't know wendy's or something for food i jump on his laptop type in the thing i'm like agreement bradley g jack house agreement trying to find this thing right find it boom right click share airdrop finish six on the phone right and do littling he comes home oh shit later boat (laughs) check my phone (laughs) Instead of airdropping myself this agreement, right? I've somehow airdropped myself a work performance review 
for one Jack Bean. <laughs> and bro, this report was bad, bro. It was bad as fuck. Oh, this from his guy, employment. Yeah, from his actual employer. And I'm reading it like <laughs> has not listened to brief repeatedly, makes jokes at expense of other employees, bracket, <laughs> particularly female, close bracket. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, bro, I am out. I am fucking out. You can keep your six hundred dollars, man. I'm fucking out. Let yeah. go. Dude, you, know who, you know whoever wrote that was dying laughing writing it too, and they were like, "Dude, dude, is I was dying laughing, laughing reading it, homie." <laughs> oh my god, I was dying. I can't. I couldn't believe it was like a full on accident. It was just trying to get the agreement, you know, so that I could text it to him and be like, "Oh, look, bro, I found it." But you scrounged up some better gold. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's oh, that was good. Right but yeah, so moved out of his place, lived at a friend's for a little bit until I got this apartment. And now we finally got this apartment. So we're chilling nice. for a, a year and six months or something. And then, right on. yeah. How does uh, Christchurch or how does Auckland compare to Christchurch? I actually like Christchurch better. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Christchurch wow. is more chill. There's more parks that are good too, like in Auckland, bro. You know, there's a lot of parks, but I don't rate them. And there's yeah. loads of people, so many people yeah. at all of them. And yeah, like, you know, Sam knows all about the session with Scooter Brad. If you go yeah. at any time, like past midday or 3 p.m., bro, like you done. Like, it's not a sesh. It's just a Q&A. And, and <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's just stress conference at that point. Like, yeah, yeah. I feel like that's anybody with like a name and really any action sport. If you show up at that point, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Oh, and I've seen it, man. I've seen it. It's it gets bad. It gets gets pretty crazy. Dude, I there was some crazy things that happened when I was. Yeah. What was your? What has been like your craziest fan encounter? Ooh, man. I'd probably have a few of those. I think my the uh, i've had like very like good and bad experiences i guess yeah my most memorable is usually like you know i go to meet and greets and there'll be like maybe like nine or ten people who bring like a v like a v can you know the energy drink oh they'll yeah be like they'll bring it up to me and they're like yo like i bought you this v and the first time I'm like, yo, like, that's me. I'm like, got a drink. That's sick. Thanks, man. Appreciate yeah. it. Like, and it's my favorite drink. And I always appreciate it from them. And then the second kid comes. And then the third kid. And then the fourth. And the fifth. And the sixth. And the seventh. And at, oh, at the end, I've got this fucking, 24 like, 24 <laughs> stack of, of V, bro. And I'm like, oh, man. Like, I feel so bad. Like, obviously, I'm not going to drink all these. I have to give them out. So I just start giving them out to kids. And yeah. this kid, like, this kid came up to me and was like, I think I was at uh, Ramp Attack in... Is it in Brisbane Ramp Attack or is that Sydney? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Is that Ramp Attack? Yeah. And this kid comes up to me and he's like, "How, bro, you like, you didn't, you didn't give my drink away, did you? And I was like, oh, like, I'm sorry, man. And like, you know, I, I already had one. So I just thought like everyone could probably use it. And he's like, bro, you should have fucking given me back then. Like, and this kid, I don't know. He was probably like 11 or something. He literally like cried his eyes out right in front of me. It was like, well, how can I give my fucking drink away, man? Like, what? I bought that drink just for you and you should fucking give it away to someone. Like, like yeah. I'm standing there like, oh, <laughs> yeah, what do I do? <laughs> uh, sorry, pal. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Shit. Felt yeah. so bad. Um, another one I had was at like Corby. This is when I was like super popping and like people yeah. obviously didn't understand that I was a majorly huge pothead at the time, which I always have been. Yeah. <laughs> so this kid, he, yeah, go ahead. Oh, that was the, that was the big Coda trip, wasn't it? Yeah. That was the big Coda yeah. trip. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm at Adrenaline Alley and, um, you know, we're all outside on the street plaza, just like hooning someone's vape. I don't know whose vape it was, but like whatever, Scooter Brad's chief in the vape, like a bows. Yeah. <laughs> the cloud yeah. things. This kid, I don't know, he like videos it and I see him like with his flash out, you know, and he's like standing there <laughs> like oh, <laughs> Scooter Brad huffing the vape. And I was like, uh, you know, just uh, whatever, nothing normal. And, but he like, he kind of puts his phone in his pocket and like immediately runs away. And I'm like, what the fuck like that's 
I don't know, suspicious, isn't yeah. it? Like some Weird. kids just like gapping it. Like if you weren't like scared, like what else did you get? Like, you know, I don't know what else we were doing, but like, yeah, might have been something bad, you know, something I said, or you know, who knows? It's shop talk, yeah. sailor talk, you know what I mean? Shit that you yeah, don't of course. fucking want published or whatever. So, you know, we go find this kid and he's like, you know, oh. I don't, I don't have, I don't have the phone. I don't have the phone, you know, trying to tell me that he doesn't have it and doesn't know where it is. I'm like, bro, I know that you're the kid, you know, I recognize you. And, you know, if it's just, if it's all okay with you, I'd like to just get this over with and have you delete whatever you just filmed of me just because I have every right to say that, you know? Yeah. And um, yeah, he made it like super problematic, but at the end of it, finally like gave it up and yeah, it's just like experiences like that is like, yeah, the more annoying ones yeah i don't know it's always like awkward and like we we're saying before like it just becomes a press release like people will bait you as well like people will say things and antagonize you and and try to get you to say something you know there was, there was yeah that always always and you know I'm, like I'm, I'm a pretty short guy you know i won't lie to you you know i'm i'm straight with cunts you know yeah i don't yeah i don't fuck with idiots or anything so i just tell them how it is you know it's, yeah yeah um what company in scootering do you think is doing the best right now shit who do i think is the best oh sorry i just got to answer this text real quick oh yeah go for it go sam go sam all right (laughs) i'll i'll say my piece on this i think the company that's doing the best right now is definitely epic um I think image wise, yeah, team stacked. In terms of yeah, the team, true. they are exactly un unmatched in terms mm. of the caliber of their team. They just went on a really rad US um I mean West Coast and a little bit into the to the Rockies um little tour with uh Tom Christiana, um Nick Tedrick and company. Yeah. And that was really successful and um and they, they were able to film a bunch of a bunch of shit and they are on top of the game when it comes to video parts which is like a mm. huge staple in scootering um like that, that that's been a staple for years and definitely needs to become more and more uh, of a regular thing um mm. and they're like leading the pack in in that regard i think um, yeah and then i agree parts as well the 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 the, the variety that they have like you'll see kids like pandemonium decks come on there's a pandemonium deck at every skate park you yeah. ever visit yeah and there's also kids on linworms that are writing 12 standard um they're and, everywhere and they, 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 they they you know they, they they create parts that cater to the rider in a way that not many other companies do and i'm not saying that every company has to be like well, i'm not going to say like oh lucky needs to be street too like no mm. like they have their they have their um targets yeah their target demographic um but i think epic has just done the best job through and through it did take a while to release a box deck though <laughs> that, yes that is true that's what i was thinking the whole time but when that came when that came though that i think that was the big win to the whole proto shebang and it's not even close to as bad yeah I, bring it when you mentioned proto proto's had a, a tough a tough run in the media i think they've had yeah, a very tough run and it's all it's 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 crazy because it all comes from American soil. Do you notice that? Yes. Oh well, yeah. Like, it all comes from American soil. Yeah. And that and but that's what I mean. Like not only does Proto come from American soil, is that its heaviest criticizers are all US American. Soil. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I mean. And I don't understand that. You know, I don't understand where the patriotism lies in hating a brand that literally put your sport on the map for your country period for most of the world period it's just a little disrespectful and i can understand where that opinion comes from but a lot of the a lot of the resentment comes from like other aspects of the company Mm. um some people just wholeheartedly object to the two-piece design and i mean honestly i can respect people objecting to that because and that's fine they can buy another people. deck <laughs> yeah exactly um they can buy another fucking deck exactly Sam. and I, I i think that and I, i'm and this is funny that I, I might as well just address this here um i've made plenty of memes about proto on my meme page but like 
there, there are things that I think are in the best interest of the company in, in raising their own bar and getting, getting better. I'm not just like what? talking them down on a personal level. I'm like, I'm making it painstakingly obvious what I think are the cracks in the company and mm-hmm. how Broussard and company can elevate the brand like it once was. You mm-hmm. know, I'm not trying to like tarnish their reputation or anything. I'm, I'm like, I understand. I'm, I'm indirectly, I'm calling them out essentially in, I think, okay. a justified manner. So let's talk about what's what's an aspect that they can, what's what 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 is a crack? Where where does one crack lie? Um, one of them is the I, I I just don't like this this and this is this is a definitely a bit more of an underground one with people that have really done like their investigating. Just say the point, um, Sam. <laughs> yeah, but um, people think that uh, that Andrew um speaks on behalf of scootering and that he owns. Okay. specific part concepts yeah you know what i mean like as in as in the tdi tech right and and and, yeah. and when people i mean technically people, he does own it yes but when people object to like saying oh you you don't have six wide decks on the market yeah he's like oh well actually we were the first com- company to do that and then he and then that, that's his justification for for not having them out we were the first so yeah we're, we're still but, at the top yeah and i'm like i i mean i know why they're not out <laughs> do you think he doesn't have the funding for them no no it's not that at all have you not seen he posted there was a there was a rack a uh, rack posted a, a proto like a, a photo of a of the, of stock the, rack right yeah. it had measurements marked yeah on the photo i talked to him literally like immediately following that because as as you know and as everyone knows there's no five five and no six you know and we've been waiting yeah but I mean, I wouldn't is, be surprised if there were six wide prototype decks that Proto has made that are existent right now. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, no, there, there, there are. There definitely are. There, there, there is. Definitely there are. definitely are. is, yeah. I'm sure there are. But I guess, yeah, for... <laughs> okay. So I'm, I'm, lo- I'm looking at a message. I'm, I'm, I am looking at a message that confirms the existence of... I'm, I'm also looking at photographs. <laughs> which which directly confirms the existence of not only the measurements that you're speaking of, but more. Okay. And these are dated, I'll just date them, yep. 27th August, 2020. Okay. So the expectation was, <clears throat> I don't want to reveal too much as to not fuck yeah, up Andrew's sure release plan. That that's, why, that's why I'm fact-checking these. That's yeah. why I'm fact-checking these. Yeah. Um, yeah, I can't, I can't, I can't release anything seasonal wise or, or timeline wise, but, but I can tell you, I'm looking at, I'm looking at big decks. Okay. <laughs> okay, cool. And I'm looking that's at what, that's kind of what tilt those plot two, extrusion, to like 20 meters long of, of big decks. All right. Yeah. No, not just one. I'm looking okay. at a whole yeah, fucking thing. Mass, mass produced. Decks. Yeah. Okay. Um, one follow up question to that. Did he. And then you don't have to answer it. Like you don't have to mm-hmm. give me an answer. It's more of a rhetorical question. Mm-hmm. Did he give you a reason for them not being released yet? Yes. Okay. Cool. Cool. Okay. And do is I understand it? it, it and do do I do I understand it wholeheartedly? Yes, I do. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Good. And I think we can move on yeah. from that. Um, <laughs> no. I, yeah. I, I understand. I understand. You know. And and I too. You know. I. I'd love to see a bigger proto deck. In fact, I'd like, you know, I'd like to ride one. You know, I'd like to have that opportunity. Yeah. But, you know, I'm, I'm obviously not going to ride anything under six. Uh, you know, five sevens my current, but I do like the six very much. Yeah. And I will be going back to it as soon as I can. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but like in terms of like wheels and stuff, you know, I'd love to see them do a 30 wide, 30 wides. Yes, I swear by them. I want everyone wide. to put down the 24. The 24 needs to be abolished and fucked off forever. It is just... <laughs> It needs to go. The 30 wide is where it is at. I'm telling you. Yes. I wholeheartedly I agree with that, <laughs> that opinion. Mm. But mm. I never got your answer, Brad. What, who is the, who's the doing the best right now? Who's Top Donny? <clears throat> you know, AO was, AO was there for, for a minute. Shout out. But Shout out I think, I don't know. Like I've heard some, I've heard some quality control issues from their side. I've heard, um, but you hear that everywhere, honestly. So yeah, you know, I'd probably scratch that one from the record. 
you know, I, I'd agree that image wise ethic is pretty up there. Like, you know, the team is fucking stacked. There's no doubt. There's yeah, no doubt about that. If it was, you know, 2017 of now, you know, mm. if it was dissidents like coalition V five and it was like brand teams, yeah. mate, they're going to win. Yeah. Yeah. You know, with ease yeah. and their yeah, their production quality too is just sick in terms yeah. of media. So I'd probably have to agree with you there. Right on. Huh. How about you, Trev? Um, mine's kind of weird because I, I, I really have been liking Tilt lately, mainly because of how mm. they're approaching branding and how they're approaching their team is not necessarily the best riders. It is more so riders that create a good brand image for them and create mm. kind of a lifestyle behind Tilt as it's seen. Yeah. So I really like that kind of branding. I think it's kind of has more of the future as far as like becoming more than just a scooter brand, uh, turning into having more mainstream type clothing or aspects, lifestyle, lifestyle type aspects to the right. brand. And I think that'll bring more people into scootering. I agree. And I, I think adding on to that, um, I actually got this reply to something um, that I commented on one of um, Tilt's posts um, about, about one of their riders that was getting flack for not like having the sponsor caliber trick selection in a video or something. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. And they, they had this, like this interesting response that I'm sure that Colin and whoever uh, operates the account, like replies on like a daily basis. And it's like, Tilt isn't a company that's like interested in really good writing to mm. market their brand. They just want to show people having fun scootering and elevate mm. the the public image of what scootering is, you know. Yeah. From, from an and that that's a really that is a really cool approach. Yeah. From an outsider looking in, because and that's that that still sells. You know, mm. it's not just like you're not speaking to the conditioned scooter rider. Um, no. They're selling like friendliness. They're selling community, and exactly. and that's exactly. a really that's good selling like, point. That's like an even better way of. Mm. Thing, you know, you'll notice like Austin Spencer and Will Cash in like the right. two probably most loved scooter riders in terms of like the clot club you know what i mean right. like yeah. they're both the most polite guys and, and, and will will judy as well is on that list yeah in my opinion like and he he embodies tilt like to the nth degree I'm like, eden like del a, a gigliano as well is that his name eden eden, eden yeah gigliano. eden kills yeah. him so he's a funny as chair eh? he's fucking hilarious that yeah, guy no, he <laughs> yeah he's so funny yeah no, they're they they I think I think their reputation is kind of the height in terms of like company <clears throat> success at yeah. the moment and and prominence in scootering. I'd probably put Epic just a pedestal or two higher um, mm. at the moment. But yeah, no Tilt. I've had respect for Tilt since. The oh yeah, yeah, and they're reliable. You know, let's not beat around the bush. Yeah. It's a reliable yeah. brand. They got reliable parts. You pay for it too. Consistent quality. Yeah, you know, and their parts, they they hold value as well. I got to say that from a business perspective, they do hold value, these parts. Same with like things like Apex and Ethic yeah. as well, for the most yeah. part. You know, they they do hold their value on resale, which is really good for people like me, young kids who want to make businesses out of what they do and so on and so forth. Yeah. Well, as, as well as warranties. They are really good with warranties. And I know that can get a little bit hairy when you're talking about companies that have reputations when it comes to getting a refund or a, 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 a part warranty but mm. i have heard that tilt and ethic have pretty strong track records when it comes to warranties for busted parts mm. yeah well that's good cool so uh brad what do you think is the dumbest fad in scootering <laughs> switching gears <laughs> completely yeah <laughs> I mean, a brand image <laughs> <laughs> i mean if it's not the kickless rewind then uh no nah, i i think uh oh, i'll probably have to take a moment to think about that actually yeah that is <clears throat> yeah it's bad damn there's been plenty <laughs> yeah I, I mean there's there's always kind of a a fad going on isn't there yeah i can just list things that i Absolutely. Can you please go ahead? Can you list some? Go ahead. Yeah, I want to hear uh, some. Trevor and I have this one that we kind of both hate. Who you say? It's what? Like your, I don't even know what you're talking shoes, about. Go. Oh, Air Force Ones. <laughs> I hate Air Force Ones. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't, you know, I, I get why kids wear them. 
you know, no, I get too. I get the anti heel bruise aspect, but <laughs> what I can't understand is how they fit their feet on the deck. Like yeah. your deck's already so small. You they know, you're don't. You're a fucking eighteen and a half core deck, and you know your Air Force size three is taking up the whole fucking thing. You know, I don't know <laughs> exactly. I could exactly. Never ride in them personally, no. It's like you have to call <laughs> no foot drag or no toe drag on like. A tail whip because they're gonna yeah, they're gonna touch your yeah. shoe to the ground no matter what. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I, I mean, okay, I, I'm assuming you know you, you probably poke fun at uh, Max Jackson then uh, over this. That one. Is, oh, that yeah. is, that yeah. is the origin <laughs> of that like discrepancy. Trick of the yeah, year, Max I, I Jackson. Figured, let's year. I figured. I figured. So okay, so let let's talk about that. You know, I um, I saw that post. You know, I saw that post, and I was like. Like uh, I mean, uh, pretty questionable, but uh, you know, at the end of the day, I mean, the the kid, the kids worked for it. Like, you got to give them that much. Yeah, least. oh like, yeah, he fucking talent. works that for it. You got to give them that. Is understood, but you know, the the writing, the writing is really one thing. The writing is really one thing. The the posting and upkeeping of that is a whole nother thing, man. So like, yeah. Yeah. The people that take all the credit away from the writing, they're just, they're all fucking mad at the fact that he fucking built something for himself, you know? Yeah, I, I'm right. I'm paying him. I'm paying him for music promo. Scooter Brad's paying him for promo, you know? Like, yeah, yeah. You, you got to get on the wagon. If you don't, yeah. if you want to fucking be somebody, stop fucking yeah. leaving these shit Instagram. Yeah. Like, oh, he left his fucking heel on the ground. Like, <laughs> go land the trick yourself, then you pansy. Fuck yeah. up. Yeah. Honestly. Is this Jeez. the whole fuck the talk and walk the walk? Yeah, the just walk ordeal. it, man. Don't talk about it. Be about it. Right. No, exactly. Yeah. The thing about Air Force Ones for me is I, I don't, I like all the people who ride in them, like as riders. <laughs> They're great riders. I just hate the shoes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, I've got I've got another bad. I was thinking about the uh the bottoms the what, the skateboard rails that people were putting on the side of their deck to make them wider. Oh, right. I, I'm a big fan of BRB JPEG. Do you know that account? Oh, is that like a meme account? That's no, the homie. Hang on. BRB dot or JPEG. Okay. Here, let me pull it up. Let me pull it up. Yeah, I always I always fucking I just always call him JPEG in my head. Yeah. BRB. Dot JPEG? No, just BRB, I think. Yeah, this is the bro. Is it the one with no profile picture? No, it's not. Uh, his bar says, oh, maybe it's a prove, actually. Never mind. But yeah, oh. his fucking deck is massive. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think I know oh, what you're talking that, about. Dude, with like the, with like the, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's like a nine wide or some shit. Isn't it? Yeah, Huge. I think. Maybe I'm yeah. confusing myself. There's a lot of people that, you know, and I, I do this all the time and you'd know because you'd watch my content. I yeah. fucking, I use like, I'll name someone and use the wrong photo or vice yeah. versa. I'll fucking say who's in the photo and yeah. the story's really about like someone completely different. I don't know how that shit slips through, man. Cause you know me, I, I watch, I watch all my videos like so many times Make while sure I'm editing it correct. before I upload it. Yeah. And man, like sometimes the shit just, you know, like I'm like, yeah, no, that's You're right. like, that's, yeah, that's right. That's Will Judy, <laughs> and it's a photo of like Eden or whatever. I'm I'm like, oh shit. Yeah. I do the same with this. Like, yeah, I'm talking about this person, but it's like cool. that person will DM me later, like, you know, I watched that podcast and that's not me. And I'm like, Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm like, people, people may bag on that kid, but like, no one can deny that scooter looks like so much fun to ride, dude. Hey, and that comes back to the whole point so of tilts sick. marketing, man. You know, we're, we're talking, we are talking about these, what's your most hated scooter fan? And yeah, yeah, you could, you have all these conversations like, I hate this about it and this about it. But at the end of the day, you know, we're all fucking guilty of probably. Oh, one yeah, another, of course. There's things that people think that like, they'll, they'll try I'm manual with my break. When you know full well, they do that same thing themselves. And mm. they just want to validate that they do it too. Mm. Um, I have, I have another bad you guys are interested um yeah go ahead. i don't like seeing insta edits that show the run-up like six uh yeah 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 no this one this one yeah i agree i agree oh stop yeah. fucking editing your clip where it's like all right fly out fade to black fly out fail fade to black fly out fail fade to black about six times Knee yeah and then they run up and do it and i'm like speed. <laughs> yeah. yeah and it's and the trick is like a quad whip like 
Yeah. <laughs> all, all love, exactly. all love, but like, damn, just post the quad whip, homie, and I will <laughs> like it. And I'll be like, nice <laughs> job. Like if you beat around the bush, I'm like, fuck. Yeah. This, yeah. This, you know what's funny? This actually, in, this actually uh, originated with me, with Kai, because Kai kind of had that issue a little bit a Real. few years ago. And since he's then, like, I think he's learned from it, and he kind of mm. now gets right to the point, luckily. But I think when we hung out, I've, I've drilled the point to him that he has to post like six second clips. Like, yeah. I, I don't think you should post anything over 10 seconds, man, because no one cares. Like, yeah. like, you know, it yeah. sucks. It sucks. Singles, but that's the singles, case. But that is the case. Do the worst. Raw, the best. Singles, raw singles perform the best hands down for me, from my experience. Yeah. Same yeah. here. You know, the, the quick three second looper and it's just one real aesthetic trick. Yeah. yeah. Cool. You what, know, they work. Brad, what have you... uh? taken away or learned from doing scoot reviews so much <laughs> uh a lot about consequence <laughs> yeah you know um yeah a lot a lot about consequence um you know i've learned that everything you say can and will be used against you yeah <laughs> In the court of law and especially on the internet. <laughs> um, That's so you know. On Instagram. Yeah. On Instagram. Yeah, yeah. I should I should put that as my bio. Eh? Um, <laughs> but you know, I think also I've learned I've learned a lot about media. That's for sure. You know, I've I've learned a, a valuable lifelong skill that I will absolutely make shitloads of money off throughout my life. Yeah. Um, Oh, yeah. You know, so get mad, you know, once Scooter Brad's channel is truly dead and I fuck off to do something else, that's when I'll make a shitload more money than I'm making now. <laughs> you know, I choose to do this. I want everyone to understand that I choose to do this because I really like doing it. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's hard. It's hard as fuck sometimes, you know, and sometimes you want to give it up, but like pfft, the man will be done when he's done. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. You learn to be resilient and you learn to... Pick your words carefully. Yeah, well, I'm sure. Um, not to overshare and not to undershare. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Pretty much felt like everything right there. Yeah, that yeah that's good. good. I, I, I liked that. And those are, those I think, are yeah, I, I guess a lot of, you know, anyone watching this would, they'll be seeing a, a very much different, more raw side of me at the moment, especially because Sam is here, you know, so Sam I'm more familiar with, so it's a little bit more. Yeah, genuine right. i would say <laughs> yeah um that's why i brought him yeah <laughs> yeah so like you know they'll they'll look and think you know oh, he's not exactly how i'd picture him or whatever that is and you know yeah. you know i won't be you know no one is yeah. like they are you know yeah a hundred percent at least yeah yeah if if you were talking to somebody who was starting out a youtube channel and wanted to do something what advice would you have for that oh prepare yourself for probably the toughest grind you know yeah. you've had so far you know it's it's not easy it is not easy i uploaded every single day for eight months straight i oh also went God. to uni at that time i you know i went five days a week to university i got good grades and i, I committed you know I, I finished i finished my studies and by the end of that year yeah boy uh, happy go lucky with one hundred and thirty-five thousand subscribers but it changed me bro it changed me big big time you know i'm i'm not the same as i was before this you know it's it has changed me yeah. in a big way yeah people don't understand that you film like i know you did vlogs for a while too so like you film yeah. a vlog all that day, was the easy get, part <laughs> yeah you get back at night and then you have to edit that and yeah. that's not talking about like all the uh actual like we're not and, and we're, and we're also we're also not talking about just uh, some guy's vlog being edited you know what i mean we're not we're not just talking about some vlog we're talking about a vlog that has a three-layer score sound effects titles animations yeah Quality. memes <laughs> you know it's not well it's done. not yeah, a well joke. done it's well done and they're long you know what i mean it's yeah. it's hard as fuck to do yeah. it's yeah. no joke and what do you use but to edit i use premiere pro okay yes 100%. sir <laughs> it's the only way to go it's the only way it's the fastest it's the most uh you can do the most with it yeah well brad i have a couple more questions for you before we Let's end go. this um what 
like in 10 years, what do you want? Like, where will you be in 10 years? Do you think? 10 years, I'll be probably hosting a huge street contest somewhere. I would say, I, you know, my dream is to get a, like a street league going like a SLS street league, you know, something like that is yes. what is what we need in this scene. You know, I think the park riding and stuff is all well and good. And I think their park contest has been established now, given the fact, you know, we talked earlier about the world skate organization and there are talks. I want to add, there are talks about the scootering being in the Olympics, like already that is already being talked about really? in that channel. Yes. Um, so, you know, that, that time is, is maybe eight to 12 years away. And once that happens, you know, the next stage, because as you know, BMX didn't get a street contest at this prior Olympics. They only had park. The yeah. next one will likely have BMX street. So ideally, if I can set up a street league of sorts, you know, in that time period, then boom, I could be leading everyone through to the street Olympic games, whatever, whatever. And here's all my qualifiers that I run with whatever the federation is called or something like that. Yeah. You know, that'd be my scooter dream. Dude, imagine just going off of that, Brad, imagine how cool it would be if you facilitated like the scootering SLS and that provided the opportunity for like a street scooter event to be in the Olympics. And you were granted an opportunity to MC the Olympics. Yeah. You, that'd like, be fucking sweet. That offer? Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, and you better believe that whoever's emceeing that first scooter comp at the Olympics, bro, that's going to be me. That's going to yeah. be me, sir. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is going to be me. Oh, I'm going to yeah. fight for that spot, man. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. What can, you, what can you tell us about what you've heard about the Olympics and scootering? Pretty much what I said before. I'm, I'm aware that there, are, that there is an active conversation happening between the World Skate Organization and the Urban World Series organizers. I am aware that there is talks. Yeah. And open is, communication. I can urban, also confirm that ISA again is not a part of that conversation, like I stated earlier. Yeah. Is Urban Street or whatever urban world. urban world games, are they the ones who facilitate it into the Olympics? Or how does that work? They so to my understanding, and you know, I need more facts to clarify. Yeah. But <clears throat> it's to my understanding that. So the Barcelona Extreme Park, right? The park builders fees and, you know, all those people. Somewhere in that realm of organization, there are a couple of different parties who, you know, are responsible for making those decisions, aka bringing in a sport to the Olympics, sourcing who builds the park. And the, I think the biggest thing to, to confirm that happening is is the fact that isa isn't actually a part of the conversation had they been involved it would have been a much bigger question as to how are they getting through but it's yeah. obviously the world skate organization who is basically making the calls if they're not if you're not talking to world skate then you're not gonna you're not getting in because they're the ones organizing it oh okay so the confirmation that urban world series is working with them and has published the fact that they are in ties with them is an obvious indicator that yes, it's happening. Right on. So do you? You're definitely on the yes are road you, for are Olympics. Pro, are you pro scootering in the Olympics? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Why? Why it's free publicity. Who yeah. cares who fucking wins? Who cares sales? Who cares? Yeah. Bigger community. That's what we want. Yeah. Right. We just want to be yeah. legitimized. Like I don't like, think anyone yeah, cares about being an Olympian for scootering. Like imagine the hmm. day. When you don't, when you no longer have to have that explanation of scooter conversation looming in the back of your scootering head. isn't a real sport. It's in the Olympics. Fuck you. Yeah, yeah exactly. And then, but then once it is, <laughs> once it is, once it is, no one's gonna deny. It. Like I yeah. know that. Even after maybe the, maybe not the first year, like it, it's gonna take a, a bit longer. But people yeah. people will understand. Oh, uh, bro. It, I, yeah, yeah, I can see it. You know, 20, 20, 34, whatever the fuck men's pro men's scooter final. It'll be there. Trust me. Dude, I cannot <laughs> yeah, wait. So sick. I cannot wait to see scootering um, being being like posted randomly on pages like ESPN and shit like that. I just think that mm. would be so surreal to see. That'd be you know, nice. we've, we, you know, we've like, seen we've seen a little bit of that, you know, which is yeah, mostly from Juzzy. Juzzy. <laughs> yeah. Juzzy. Juzzy is so got put on there, but like 
from 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 like a like like imagine a scooter rider a scooter mm. like a, yeah scooter rider on a more mainstream like a level yeah name. Like yeah, like hot say hot ESPN hot. was posting, you know, highlights of this week's men's scooter final, blah blah blah. ESPN, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. That kind of thing. Yeah, that'd be that'd be so cool. Insane. Yeah, like turning on Sports Center on cable or something and just talk, yeah. hearing talk about the the latest yeah. competition or like something like that. You know? Yeah, so. and you know that's that's it's so so important that you know we we stay vigilant as a community to ensure that like the right people and the good people are making these calls. You know, because as the bigger it gets, the more opportunity there is for exploitation, the more opportunity there is for collapse. And we've seen collapse. We've seen brands go under. We've had a few, what I would call, you know, recesses in our community where people have kind of had to run and hide. And we don't really need that. You know, we just, we need, we just need vigilance. Yeah. 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 All right. I got one. I got one more for you. I always end with this one, no matter what. So, uh, what is your meaning of life, Brad, and why? Freedom. Freedom. I just love, bro, I'm addicted waking up every day and just like world is my oyster, you know? Yeah. I, I want to be free as fuck. I don't want to have to show up for no dickhead boss man. You know, I don't care for that life. I've been in that life and yeah. I'm not going back, you know, as far as I can help it. Yeah. Yeah. I want to wake up and do what I want to do. And as long as I'm doing that, sweet. And you know how you, you do that? You, cre- you create your job, yeah. which is yeah. what you've been doing. Yeah. Yes, sir. See, that's yeah. like such a great, simple philosophy, you know? Yeah, it's and like good. The simpler it is, the, 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 I feel like the more you can facilitate that. Um, mm. that's, that's definitely something that Brad's done. How about, how about you? Or do you normally direct that question towards yourself at the end of the... Oh, of course not. No. <laughs> do, you, do you want me to give you mine? <laughs> Yeah, I'm I want to hear you, Sam. <laughs> Go for it, Sam. Okay. Um, I think my meaning of life is to impact as many people as possible through, like, storytelling. I just think storytelling is one of those mediums that is yeah. so cherished in the mm. world today. And, like, entertainment is more more important in, in, in you know, from, from, from an international perspective than it ever has been before. Um, and I think being like a major nerve in the beating heart of humanity that, that people will like refer to for years to come would be like the most fulfilling, fulfilling thing I can ever imagine in my life. So I'd Hmm. say being like a a, a storyteller and impacting as many people as possible, um, in in that regard would be. I like that. Yeah. I can relate to that. Nice. Awesome. We're telling a story right now. Yeah, yeah exactly. we're always there telling the story. Exactly. That's, that's the I point. Like doing, I like doing shit like this. So it's great. Well, thank you again, Brad, so much for coming on and taking some time out of your day to come and talk with us. It means no a worries. lot. Thank you guys for having me. I appreciate it. I hope I didn't ramble too much. <laughs> no, you no, it was great. Um, Alan dance came up, so I think yeah, no. okay. <laughs> Oh my god. No, Alan. No. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you guys for listening to the uh yeah. Alec Industries podcast. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day, night morning, whatever time it is for you. And I will see you guys in the next one. Peace. Peace.